Cane there, sir? It is, yes. Yeah, someone gave it to me. It's called um, it's called Benedict Cumberbatch. <laughs> <laughs> because it was in The Hobbit, what well, you might know. That's yes. The Hobbit. It's a wee film. And there was a wee book with three giant films. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, funny, the first film, uh, I think it got to page 64. Yeah. Three hours, and it got to page 64. So I presumably filmed, you know, the, co the commas, the exclamation marks, and the page turning. <laughs> for like three hours of filming the subtext. A tiny little. I suppose when it said there was a battle, well, there was one <laughs> hell of a battle on the screen. Mm -hmm. so, good morning. Good Welcome morning. to MCM. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> good to be here. Oh, you mentioned The Hobbit. Uh, do you know much about The Hobbit? <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, really. <laughs> took three years to make, <laughs> and I was privileged to play a Radagast the Brown, a wizard, which I ran home when I got the part, read the book, and found out it was hardly mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily there was a wee bit more of him in the film. But it's great, because I, I went out, I think about maybe eight or nine times, maybe even more, over the three years. I didn't stay there all the time like the rest. I kind of flew in and out. And so I, I, I always flew around the world west, following the sun. And each time I went, I lost a day. So <laughs> by the time I finished the film, I was eight days younger than when I started. <laughs> so, Sebastian, you've done a lot of work with Big Finish, obviously. And I was just yes. wondering, do you approach acting for film differently than what you approach it for audio? Yeah, well, yeah, it, 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 it is different. Um, I mean, the audio is, uh, A, uh, I'm six feet tall and the sets don't shake and um, I don't have to learn the line. I wouldn't be able to do that on the film. Yeah. A bit <laughs> difficult, really. Uh, but it also, radio, you it comes, you know, it becomes internal. It's all in your head and comes out of your mouth, and all the expression and everything's got to come out through here. And it's very enjoyable to do. It's a very kind of inner kind of concentrated thing. Um, whereas film, as you know, is uh, it's visual, but film is different from theatre acting. Because theatre acting is like painting with a big, broad brush. It has, depending on the size of the theatre, but, you know, when I, we were doing King Lear, two in the world, we were painting 2,000 seaters. So you had to be big and bold. And then you have to do a film, and it's all... It's like painting with a fine Japanese brush. You know, it's kind of a... Again, that's internal. I love that. It's kind of orgasmic sometimes when you feel you got it right. Not very often. <laughs> but the older you get, it's even harder. <laughs> Talking about getting things right, obviously um, we now have our latest incarnation of the Doctor. I'm curious if you think they got that decision right. I think fans clearly seem to think they did. Oh, great! Yes, that, yeah. Well, um, I mean, I I can't make a judgment. I haven't seen um, what she's done with the part. I'm excited by and interested in it. Yeah. What can I say? <laughs> Do I have to have a sex change? I'm not sure, really. Because <laughs> I am still the Doctor, technically, in Big Finish. You yeah. see. Yeah. So I was about to say, owning that legacy of being a doctor, if you have children and adults coming up to you at these conventions, what's probably the most, uh, the best thing that someone said to you being at one of these events? The best thing? Oh, I suppose, um, I, I, I don't know, uh, the thing that jumps to mind is not, it's, it's, it's the extraordinariness of Doctor Who and how it's, it's universal reach. And I didn't know, I had no idea when I got a part, I just thought, you know, learn the lines and try to bump into the monsters. But when I go around the world, people come up to me and say, they, you, this changed my life. You know, and it happens in various different countries and continents. People come up and say, I watched Doctor Who, and there's something magical about it. I think it's also because it's shared between generations, and that's what makes it. They talk about, I, I watched this with my nan or my mum or my dad and they passed away, but, or and, and some young teenagers were at university and going through a bad time and somehow they got solace out of Doctor Who. And you think, I don't know, I just, you know, just doing my job. And so that's very touching. And, um, and it happens, you know, everywhere you go, it's always a surprise. And people have even said, I, I was going to kill myself, you know. And then somehow there's something in Doctor Who kept me alive. And you think, wow. I'm like, I could have, should have taken it more seriously when I was doing it. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. You mentioned briefly about uh, your time in the theatre there. Is there, is there a role in the theatre that you've yet to do that you would really want to do? Well, I, for years I wanted to play Richard III, really. Now is the winter of our discontent, mid glorious summer by this time. But now, at my age, I'll just get the hump. <laughs> <laughs> So I was just wondering, are the lunches of Big Finish as legendary as I've been led to? Oh, yes, they are. They are. I mean, they are. It's the best restaurant in town, honestly. And Toby, who does, he records the things. He runs the studio. And somehow, miraculously, he produces these astonishing meals. And it's not, it's just a huge spread. And all in a little cupboard. I don't know who he does it. He must get in the TARDIS. When he closes the door, most likely there's a whole pile of chefs in there. And then when he opens it, you know, it's like... Yeah. Is doing the big finished productions a bit like a, a, a reunion when you get to work with people you've worked with decades previously again? Yes, no, it's, it, it, that is the lovely thing. It's also the terrifying thing because sometimes you can't remember them. <laughs> <laughs> well, especially you get to my age, you think, oh, God. And they come up and say, I think, oh, how nice to see you. And uh, yes, he said, we worked together before. You know, of course I remember. Yes, dead thing you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny with fans; they come up and they say, "Oh, do you remember me? Um, I met you ten years ago." <laughs> <laughs> and now they're a young man wearing a beard. Ten years ago, they were a kid. But and I've got to say, "Oh yes, now I see you without the beard." <laughs> <laughs> Personally, what's next for you? What's coming up? What should we do with an outlook? Well, um, Sense8. Have you heard of Sense8? Yes, yeah. yeah. Well, um, I, the film's coming out in June. Yeah. June. Uh, the, the final film, which is sad in a way, it's the final film. Because it is a great piece. I think it's a very important piece. Mm. You know, it's like, a bit like Doctor Who somehow became an important piece for people's, um, uh, you know, kind of help people. And I think Sense8, very important. And great fun. And, you know, wonderful to do. And what a great bunch of actors, because I got to meet them all. And they really are nice people. <laughs> you, you think, they, um, and that's the Wachowskis, because they obviously cast them. It's a bit like Peter James. No, not Peter James. Um, he was another director. Uh, P Peter um, Jackson. 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 Yeah, he, he cast The Hobbit with such nice people. And he and had that great wisdom there, because, you know, it's going to be three years these people are going to be hanging out together. You might get, they might, you maybe go for someone who's nice, but maybe not as good as someone who's nasty. But overall, it, you know, works really well. And the, um, the Wachowskis did the same. I was very sad, though, when it was, they cancelled the third season, because when I did the second season, the uh, chief writer came to me and said, we've got plans for you in the third season. And then they went and cancelled it, the bastards. <laughs> <laughs> but then, luckily, the fans created mayhem and... Netflix said, okay, you know, we'll make a film. Just wind it all up. So it's kind of rewound up. That's the next thing. But I'm also I'm doing um I'm doing uh, Holby City. Um, yeah, I'm playing some old bugger who escapes from a night um, um, a home, gets drunk, ends up in a fight and ends up in hospital. <laughs> I don't have to walk. I'm in a wheelchair, I can lie down. Dream acting. <laughs> and and then after that, I'm in Zapped. I don't know what Zapped is. Yes, it's uh, it's uh, it's on Dave, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So it's sort of fantasy drama, it's fantasy, fantasy comedy. Comedy. I think it's quite brilliant, don't yeah. you? It's really funny. That's why I decided I want. When they asked me to, when I saw it, I thought it was hilarious. And Peter Kay's in it, and he is outrageous, joyful to watch. He's this Jewish Rastafarian wizard, and he <laughs> eats the furniture. I mean, he eats it with such joy, and you just hug yourself with laughter. It's great. Anyway, I'm doing a bit in that. I play the, the ruler of this mad, lunatic place. And then I'm off to Edinburgh to do a reef mount of a play I did last year called uh, A Joke with Bob Picardo of Star Trek. Oh, Dan Freeman. And him. Um, written yeah. by Dan. Yeah, yeah. And... Um, and also um, Johnny Bett is in it. So there's, Johnny Bett's a famous Scottish actor up in Scotland. And I've worked with him, smashing bro. So that's my, that, that's August. And then I'm off on a bucket list desire. I'm going from, by train from St Pancras to Ho Chi Minh City. Mm. By train all the way. I'm going from St Pancras to France, France, Paris, Moscow, Moscow through to uh, 
uh, stopping off in three cities uh, on the, in Siberia, Mongolia, China, Vietnam, and then I'm going to Hanoi, Ho Chi Minh City, and then I've got to go to Bangkok. Because in Bangkok, hopefully, all being well, my first grandchild will arrive. <laughs> and that's why I'm going to make it an epic journey. Just, you know, you know Tolstoy and kind of journey to meet my grandchild. Do you, do you plan on filming it and putting it up somewhere? I might, yes, I do. I've got, I, I've got um, one of those, you know, things, you know, the you can GoPro. things. Yeah. The, 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 I've just seen them, yeah. I've been trying to work out how to make it work. I haven't had time yet. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to record the whole thing, bore the whole pants off the world. It's fine, just get Orlando Bloom to tag along. Um, <laughs> are you into Orlando Bloom? <laughs> who isn't? Um, I think, okay, yeah, I, think I know okay. people who aren't, but anyway. <laughs> talking, talking of lunatics, I'm afraid we have to let you get back to the ones downstairs. All so right. Thank you. I thought you were talking to lunatics. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you very much.